Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to be showing you how to make this reverse easel card. Now I do have a reverse easel card on my channel. It was some years ago now and it was in the 6x6 version and I think it was even using the same stamp. So um, I'll link that one up here now. But that was like I said in the 6x6. This is 5x7 and I've used the beautiful Oh So Sweet Papers by First Edition. So today's video has very kindly been sponsored by Craft Label and there'll be a code popping up now. You can use that code and it will give you 20% off any of their full price own brand product only. It's a great website. I know lots of you are already familiar with it. Head over there. They've got all your popular brands and they've also got a lot of Cricut products there as well for you digital crafters. So again, there's the card. It all folds flat. You've got space on the back here to be able to write your message. So let me show you how to make it. So today I'm using the Oh So Sweet 12 by 12 paper pad by First Edition. I will link up a couple of other projects that I've already shared using this paper pad. And it's got loads of really nice elements that you can cut out quite easily as well. Then I've used the Have a Sweet Birthday for inside the card. And that's from my Mate of Surprise Sweets and Treats. And then for the main sentiment on the front, I've used the Dovecraft. And it's the, I think, I put down their Birthday Boy and Girl, but I don't think I brought them together. I think they each one of these is separate. They're all Dovecraft stamps. I'll probably still be able to find some of them available for you. And I'll check the Craft Label website. But I've used that lovely birthday girl there and I've already heat embossed that, which I'll show you in a moment. And then I'm using the circle dies, but you could have any shape and you don't have to have these as dies. You could just cut your shapes using your trimmer, be a square rectangle or any other die shapes that you might have. But I've just used these ones here. I'll give the measurements for those in a moment. So I've already gone and cut everything out. You'll see there that's the sentiment when I've heat embossed it. Like I said at the beginning, this is the five by seven version. If I haven't already linked the six by six, I'll link that up now. So you'll want a piece of 10 by seven and along the 10 inch side, you want to score at two and a half and five. Then just fold it in half. So you've got a five by seven card blank and then fold back that two and a half inch score line and just burnish. And that will give us that re reverse easel. So we're now going to stick everything onto here if anybody's new and you're, you've not seen how a normal easel card, usually what you do is you would score still how I have, but you would fold. So you'd have a you know mounted fold, then another mountain, and that would go like so. And then you could build up in front of it. But this is a reverse easel and it's going to go like so. I've then got this polka dot paper from the pad along with these two pieces here. So this one here is six and three quarters by four and three quarters. These two pieces here are two and a quarter by that six and three quarters. So they're going to be stuck here, here and on then on the bottom. So you'll have a nice border. I'll stick those down in a moment. And then because the card will be folded like this and you're going to have this like so. So take out the envelopes. It's, again, it's a landscape style. I thought I would have my message on the back here. So I've already gone ahead, those same sizes, two and a quarter by six and three quarters. I'm going to have this piece along the bottom so I can write a little message here. And then I've got this pattern piece, which is going to go in this top section there. So in total, you'll want four pieces of that two and a quarter by six and three quarters. But you obviously want them to all be a little bit different depending on how you want to decorate it. So I'm going to get all that stuck down. Then I'm going to stick this onto this slightly larger circle. Now the sizes of these, just to give you a rough idea, like I said, you can have any shape you want here. So you're looking at about three and three quarter diameter for that one. And then just over four and a half, about four and five eighths, but just something roughly around that size. You can go even bigger. You might want to have a really large piece here and then add even more decoration on that piece. But I'm planning on having this size and then I can kind of decorate into these spaces here. So I'm going to pop this up on some foam. I'm just going to pop some of these squares around. OK, next I've got this piece, which I'm going to use for my stopper, but I'm going to decorate some more on top of this. So I'm going to have maybe, you know, some of these elements and the lollipops and stuff. The idea is, is I'm going to stick this piece to the top here and then this piece here is your stopper. And I just want to decorate that a bit more and then more decoration along the top. So this piece here is the seven inch length or width of the card. And then I've got this pattern piece, which is 
one inch and then this piece would be I would do one and then one and a quarter it's entirely up to you you don't even have to have it as one long strip you might just want to have a small little cluster here I have a playlist of easel cards there's so many different ways to do these so um, check that out if you want a bit more inspiration but I've popped foam in between these ones here but I'm going to pop some more foam again just to ensure that the circle here you know does stop against that so take the backing off what I would suggest is sticking this down at first now I want to stick this so that it's in the center of the card when the cards close so that looks really nice when they take it out of the envelope so what I'm going to do is flip it over make sure it's perfectly straight so that's the top there sit that inside and then I'm just going to add my glue along that top half there. And then I can just lay that back down. And just make sure you've got equal amount on each side there. And just secure that in place. And now I can lift this up. And it's up to you. I mean, you could have it, you know, quite far forward. I'm going to have it kind of in the middle. Yeah, it's about in the middle, so I'm just going to stick that one down and then just make sure that's nice and straight, like so. And now you'll see it just locks itself in there. You can see that it holds itself really well. If yours is too bouncy, you just need to burnish the score line here. So I'm pleased with that. So now all that's left to do is to start decorating it. So it's going to be difficult for you to see, so I might just angle it slightly like this just so you can kind of watch me decorate it. It's quite easy then for me to see how I want to place everything. But so I've got this pretty floral piece, which is from the pattern paper, one of the, the sheets, like the lollipops, the Sunday. I might stick maybe that one there. And I'm just going to play around. Like I said, I want to put some more there as well. OK, so that's the finished card. Really easy to do. Use anything in your stash. You can make these for any occasion. I love how that all folds up looks really nice when it's closed and then pops up like so you could if you wanted to have your message in here you could put another circle over the back of this one and have something in there if you wanted to but I've got mine on the back there and you can see you've got space there and I added a little bit more decoration it is hanging over slightly there I'm going to leave it for now I may just make a slightly bigger envelope for this one because um, I do like the way it kind of sticks out like that but yeah, there you have it. So I hope you've enjoyed my 5x7 reverse easel card today. Remember to check out that code. I'll pop it up again here now and head over to Craft Label. I'll link everything in the description box along with the code again there as well. There'll be some other tutorials popping up um, if you want to watch them next. And if you've enjoyed today and you haven't subscribed, just hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell and then you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Thanks again for watching and I'll be back again soon.